Well, hello there, you two. This is Captain Mikey, and welcome back to another episode of Britannic Patroness of the Mediterranean in Virtual Reality. So, today, what we're going to do is we're going to look around the HMHS exterior, and then we'll go and do the RMS exterior. Alright, so without any further ado, let's get right into it. Oh, and make sure that you guys hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, uh, and hit that bell so you guys can keep up to date with all my latest videos. Alright, let's get into it. All right, here we are. We are on the HMHS Britannic. Man, does she look pretty. This is the compass platform. The platform offered a high place centered on the ship from which readings could be taken on the compass free from the heavy magnetic interference of the ship's steel. Fans like this were used to ventilate the interior, a centrifugal fan driven by a motor was inside the casing. This particular one exhausted air from the first class lounge. I got to remember to have my feet there since the feet only stay in one place. I just want to grab this and hang on to it. Just... Man, this is awesome. Am I stuck? Yep. These boxes were used to store ropes for the Welland Davids. So then what were these little boxes for? Nice. Can look down into what was the uh, first class uh, lounge. Very, very cool. To provide a little extra life-saving capacity, rafts and life belts were provided on the raised lounge roof. So, oh, that's what those are. Those are rafts. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. We'll go over to the other side. So we have right there an expansion joint. Fan trunk supplied air to fans for boiler room number three. Woo! That's down there. provide more light for what may have been operating rooms below several skylights were added to the raised roof all right thermal tanks like this one supplied hot air to rooms by forcing air through tubes heated by steam before sending it through ventilation ducts Can I 
climb this? No! I want to climb it. Okay. Oh, yeah. The sun's going down. Let's get a good look out over here, shall we? Oh, yeah, that is pretty. That is beautiful. Electric boat winch. These winches were installed only for use with the Wallen boats and davits. They were not intended for RMS design. Yeah, these were, uh, I think they were put in last minute for the uh, HMHS version. Engineer's smoke room. The tank room. Now, I'm assuming for tank room, there's, you know, they probably mean like fresh water tanks. I take it. Oh yeah, start to see the stars. Lights are about to come on in a minute. Man, look at the detail on these uh, davits. Pretty cool, man. The cranks. There's the lights. And look at that. Now that is incredible. Oh, I want to climb him, but I can't. Gantry Davit Motor House. These structures contain the motors and reels for operating the girder arms and lowering the lifeboats. That's what those are over there. and these so yeah this was uh these gantry davits were actually pretty unique to britannic uh the other olympic class liners did not have them actually most most ships did not have these gantry davits at all oh yeah the aurora borealis it is so beautiful. So incredible. The gantry davits were moved via a piston attached to a worm gear, which was connected via more gears two shafts driven by electric motors in the motor houses. Yep. We'll actually get to see them operate uh, during the sinking when we get to that. And okay. Uh, okay, so this one exhausted hot air from the first class restaurant galley. Wow! Look at the rivets. Oh man, I'm right up on the funnel. Wow! Oh my god, that's tall. Look at these rivets. Can't seem to get any further around. There we go. That is so cool. I love how how detailed that these ropes for the aft mass are just the way they're bolted down to the deck. That is pretty awesome. The fourth funnel was no dummy. While it did not exhaust gases from any boilers, it did play a vital role in ventilating galleys and other spaces. Oh. 
Nice. This one. Oh. Okay, I guess not. There we go. Uh, this is one of the uh, motorized uh, launches, as they call them. Motorized lifeboat. Uh, this is the same lifeboat that we were in uh, on the menu screen. So it even has like a little little cabin on the inside, like a little wheelhouse cabin, I guess. Or just to kind of keep some people safe from the elements, I guess. Uh, there were two of these types of boats. Oh, it even has like a tiller. Nice. Let's see. We. No. Oh, that kind of sucks. I was hoping to get up there, but I guess not. Look down over the side. Oh my god. Just absolutely crazy. I love the detail. Look at the fire hoses. Oh man, it's amazing. It is just truly amazing. Wow. Illuminated red crosses brightly lit by dozens of bulbs at night to mark Britannic as a hospital ship and ward off attacks. That did happen actually pretty successfully. I guess. So we're going to head forward now. Uh, I don't know if it's possible to get up there. No, yeah it is. I've been up there before. And yeah, maybe when I come back around. The raised roof was intended to contain more windows like on Titanic and Olympic. However, the hospital conversion left no time for them to be installed. Instead, skylights were put in. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. All right. And there's the skylights. This expansion joint was a new feature of Britannic. It cut between the lounge and reading room. Yep. So I guess Britannic had four uh, expansion joints. See, I like that. You see, like, this uh, black uh, lining thing? That's uh, uh, gutters for uh, rainwater and uh, seawater during storms or when it rains oh man it's just amazing yeah you can kind of peek in and see some some stuff forward first class entrance also called the grand staircase you could access decks as low as F deck from here. It was greatly stripped down for HMHS conversion. Yep. 
Britannic was not intended to have any of the traditional Welland Davids at all. Instead, only having lifeboats nested in large gantry davits. However, because Britannic construction was so behind schedule, the Welland Davit boat positions were added to compensate for the missing gantry davits by the bridge and on the shade deck. Unlike the two that were on Olympic and Titanic, Britannic had... Wait, I thought it was four. Well, maybe I'm wrong. Britannic had three expansion joints along her super... Okay, yeah, fourth. And a fourth over the aft well deck. These allowed the ship's superstructure, which sat on the hull, but did not contribute to its strength to flex and bend with the hull without buckling in rough seas. Now, see, I knew there was a fourth expansion joint. As a hospital ship, Britannic had a very different paint scene from her intended RMS livery. One aspect of this was the dark mast dado painted all around the boat deck, even on davits and machinery. Yep. It was intended that an additional set of gantry davits would be installed here, like the one on the starboard side of the ship. But due to the tight schedule of the HMHS conversion, this was omitted. The gantry davits intended for this space can be seen on the ship's builder model. Yes, indeed. Lord Calvin's sounding machine and spar. Located on the port and starboard sides, these devices were used to gauge the depth of the waters the ship was in. While Britannic's plans indicate this room was for a senior officer, a lone tub can be found on the wreck that is not shown on any plan, likely just for hospital service. Eh, probably. So here we are on the uh, bridge, or we're on the bridge wing. Morse lamp. This light would be flashed on and off to talk to nearby ships in Morse code. Bridge wing cap. A sheltered location extended slightly over the side of the ship to provide clearer views. Oh yeah, look at that. That is just absolutely beautiful. Over here. Now that is great. Uh, these were for the uh, Morse lamps. Glorious, a simplified compass used to finding the ship's bearing. Oh my god. This is incredible, the view. Alright, let's, uh, let's enter the bridge. Oh, absolutely beautiful. I always forget if that's the helm indicator or the list indicator. Now oh, that's nice. The chart room. Over here you got plans of the Britannic navigating room. Brown's pet patent telemotor. Okay. 
So, the telegraphs lit up at night. Maneuvering telegraph. That's why it's probably in, in red. To indicate that it's for maneuvering only. Oh man, look, look at that. Just look at that. Just imagine standing at the windows just looking out at the ocean. That is just beautiful. Alright, so over here you have an engine order telegraph. A little table. Emer so you got the emergency telegraph right here. Docking telegraph. And another engine order telegraph. It's amazing. Hold on, port. All clear, port. Let go all aft. Set off night signals. Let go tug. Not clear port. Slack away port. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? So, navigating bridge. While this area was primarily used when near land, it did contain the main telegraphs for sending engine orders and other commands. The helm here was connected to the wheelhouse via shafts and gears. Okay. Let me turn this off for a minute. Okay, so... So this uh, helm was in fact used for when you're nearing land. So then when you're out at open sea, you use them there. Okay, that makes sense. Man. Uh, these, I believe, are for the whistles. Okay, that's the helm indicator. So, it's in the middle because that the uh, the rudder is in is in the middle, and the more you turn the wheel, the rudder turns. And this here, this little indicator here, will move either port or starboard, showing you exactly where the rudder is at which is pretty cool as the morning comes ah, fresh morning sun beautiful in the Mediterranean Sea looking down at this beautiful monstrosity Was this to be the next ship of dreams? Unfortunately, we'll never know. This is the other side. All right, so. Don't worry, I'll be going up these stairs uh, very shortly. I just want to kind of kind of look around over here. Yeah. So, uh, let me turn this off. Now, I don't know if this 
was on Britannic uh, in real life. But this is the uh, Lewis gun. Now, this is kind of like an Easter egg type of thing right here. Um, in the movie uh, Britannic that was made in the year 2000, um, they used this gun to shoot a torpedo off in the distance as it was coming, you know, to hit the ship. And you see the scenes where the first officer comes rushing out over here and he takes the Lewis gun and he starts shooting at the, uh, at the torpedo that's coming. So, again, I don't know if that really was on the ship, but you could kind of call it an Easter egg as well. There are other Easter eggs in this, uh, um, experience. Uh, alright. Fans like these were used to ventilate the interior. They mostly exhausted stale air, but some delivered fresh air. Driven by electric motors were inside the casings. Sorry, I had a bit of a yawn there. Yeah, we can look look down into the engine rooms. That's cool. Oh, I so want to climb it. I just want to take my hands and climb it. Oh my god. Fiddly trunk. Used as exhaust for hot air from boiler room number 6. Could also be used as a direct escape route for boiler crew. That is, that is true. I'm surprised no one ever really used it. Fans like this were used to ventilate the interior. They mostly exhausted... Oh, okay. Yeah, I've already read all that. Fan trunks supplied air to fans for boiler room number six. Compass platform. Like the one amidships, this area was a shelter for a compass from which to take directional readings without the magnetic interference of the ship's steel. Semaphore. At least that's how I think you say it. A device with swinging arms used to signal other ships similar in operation to old railroad sign signals. Okay. Oh man, once again, just an absolutely beautiful view. Looking forward. We're uh, right above the bridge right now. Oh man. Like, I know this isn't the, uh, the demo 401, but. And I'm sure, you know, most of you guys have probably already seen this already. But still, it's it's amazing. Alright, let's get up here. Come on. Come on. Oh, that's bad. Okay, I'm not going to attempt it again. It's just a waste of time. Okay, yeah, I've already read that. I've read that. Did I read that? 
I think so. I'll just say I did. Yeah. First class gymnasium. While Britannic was a hospital ship, this room was still used as a gym. Yep. Oh, you know what? Okay. Let me go up there one more time. going that way. Going this way. So that should be the uh, wireless uh, Marconi room. Lift machinery house contains machinery for three of Britannic's first class elevators. While Titanic and Olympic only went up to a deck, Britannic's went all the way up to the boat deck. A fourth elevator for first class was installed amidships. Mm -hmm. Elevated Bradfield insulator used in connecting the wireless equipment to the antenna strung between the two masts. Yep. So yes, this is the uh, wireless apparatus right here. And when... Britannic hit the mine and the uh, things like the guy wires above stretched and then snapped these wires here connecting to them so these wires right here were uh, were pretty much destroyed so you could send out a signal which they were doing so they were calling out for SOS but they weren't hearing any replies. So they did not know if they were even contacting anybody or not. Forward Grand Steam. Forward Grand Staircase Dome Cover. Well, get up there. I want to get up there. I've been up there before, so. Yeah, come on. Just need a little lift. That's all. Yeah, there we go. So right now I'm right above the Grand Staircase Dome. Fan trunk supplied air to fans for boiler room number four. Oh, yeah. There we go. What does this one say? Okay, that one's for boiler room number three. Um, hold on. Before I continue... Right now, I'm over the uh, children's playroom. Did ah. I'm surprised that there wasn't a thing that uh, info box. But anyway, let's continue on, shall we? This open door here goes down to the uh, ADEC promenade. Is 
pink room. Oh yeah, here we go. So here is the engine room uh, skylight. And wow, that goes all the way down to the engine room. So now I've been able to get on top of there before, but no, nah, it's not going to allow me. I don't know, the jumping in this, uh, in the virtual reality version isn't that great. Reciprocating engine room casing. This skylight provided light and ventilation to the main engine room, far below decks. A series of ladders and catwalks allow crew easy access to vital systems as well as an escape route. Yep. Fan trunks, supplied air fans to boiler room number one on Olympic Titanic. This vent was embedded in the number three deck house. Oh yeah, that's right, it was. I forgot about that. Given its position near the lowest point of the ship, Sheer, the third funnel was the tallest of the four. Did you know these sets of whistles on the third and fourth funnels were fake? Only the whistles on the first two funnels had any function at all. Yeah, that's pretty cool, huh? All right. See, this was all... See, this was not connected over here on uh, Titanic and Olympic. And we got the aft grand staircase dome right there. If I walk on these beams, can I get over there? Slow. It's because that lifeboat's in the way. Oh man, I was so close too. Oh great. I hate being under these things. So right now we're over by where the uh, first class lounge is, or I mean smoking room. Yeah, we're right on top of it. All right. So let's see, where are we gonna check out next? This door leads to the forward second class entrance. Yep. This stairway was not on Titanic but was added to Britannic for hospital service. It's possible the stairway was not intended for passenger service. Alright. 
we're gonna head down to a deck ah there's even a big sign that says boat deck so this one did ventilated air from the electric engine room down below Britannic was intended to have sliding doors to the Palm Court's port and starboard, but the hospital ship conversion took place before these could be installed. Instead, simple hinge doors was placed on the starboard side. And that kind of sucks. This room was used for ventilation fans due to changes on Britannic. This room was very different from Titanic and Olympic with half size vents and altered windowed positions. Mm -hmm. Britannic was intended. Oh, yeah. Yep. All right. So. We're going to go down the A-Deck Promenade. You can kind of see into uh, what would have been the uh, Palm Court Cafe a little bit. And then in there you have the, uh, well, I'll just read it. Within these windows the, is the significantly redesigned first class smoke room. Yep, that's the uh, first class smoking lounge. Okay, that's about the expansion joints, which I've already said. Through here is the aft first class entrance, also called the grand staircase. There's the stairs that goes up to the boat deck. By the time Britannic was converted to a hospital ship, these lounge windows had yet to be cut and installed. Like many intended features, they were left out. For Britannic's hospital service, the lounge may have been divided into smaller medical rooms with skylights installed to provide light. For hospital service, these temporary bulkheads were erected to enclose the forward promenades so they could use, be used as officers' wards. Yeah, I... yeah. I did say that in the last Britannic Patroness of the Mediterranean episode, that they were used for officers only. But then again, it does kind of contradict because it did say uh, soldiers as well, not just officers. In order pro to provide high visibility for Britannic's status as a hospital ship, two sets of arc lamps were attached on the port side and starboard side and were swung out at night to illuminate the larger red crosses on the hull. Maybe when we get to the other side it will be swung out. Pretty. So you got like all these air ducts like right above my head. What does that say? 
This stairway was not on Titanic, but was added to Britannic in the design phase and installed on the Olympic later in her career. Hell vents like these provided simple ventilation for various rooms below. And then the main mast. I don't know, I've always called it the aft mast. But I guess it's a main mast. Cargo hatch number five. Oh yeah, I forgot the boat the boat that was lowered ends up going out there and then just explodes and sinks. I forgot it did that. Okay, so we'll go on to this end. So same thing. Alright, so now we're going to head down to B deck. Alright, so here we are now on B deck. This door leads to the aft second class entrance. These doors led to cargo hatch number four, which was actually two hatches on the port and starboard side. Unlike Titanic and Olympic, these hatches were fully enclosed and trunked on Britannic. Portable boarding ramps were stowed Oh, I'm getting some weird stuff going in. Portable boarding ramps were stowed on the port and starboard sides. These were lowered and suspended next to boarding doors to allow quick and easy boarding from small boats. These doors would lead to the forward second class entrance. So pretty. This fourth expansion joint was added after the Britannic's aft well deck was enclosed in order to offset the additional rigidity created by this structure. Cargo winch used to lower and raise cargo through the hatches. So, same thing on this side. Pretty cool, huh? Wire relay, spool of wire for use in warping the ship during docking. Fairly roller, used to guide ropes during warping operations. Cargo hatch number six. Hmm. 
mushroom, or French head. Vents like these provided simple ventilation for rooms below. In order to distinguish Britannic as a non-hostile hospital ship to potential enemy warships at night, Britannic was fitted with several lighting features to make her stand out. One feature was this band of green lights along B deck. Yep. That's what all these uh these lights are. These windows led to the third class smoke room significantly enlarged from what was on Olympic and Titanic. It was moved up a deck to accommodate the expanded size. Yep. Oh yeah. It's a lot bigger, that's for sure. Ah. Capstan, a rotating drum powered by steam engines below deck used to handle ropes and cables during warping operations. To port and starboard are skylights for the steering engine room. They provide light and air as well as space for the high cylinders of the steering engines that drove the massive rudder below. Mm -hmm. So that's what that is. That's the uh, steering gear room in there. This unidentified structure was a temporary addition to HMS Britannic and many have had something to do with the morgue. Yeah, it's possible. So here we are on the very, very aft deck. On the poop deck. Capstan control valves used to operate the four capstans on this deck. Mooring bit used to secure ropes and other lines during docking or other operations. And that's the notice keep this vessel has triple screws keep clear of blades. Yep. This is the morgue. This temporary structure located far from accommodations was the Britannic's morgue, built exclusively for the ship's hospital service. Oh man, that is so cool. Just watching the flag whip in the wind. some lifeboats here and don't worry we're gonna be uh, we're gonna be uh, kind of going around this too as the ship is sinking uh, but that'll be in a future episode this deck was originally intended to become the location of the aft set of gantry davits and lifeboats the war and conversion to a hospital ship cut these plans short. Instead, sets of Wellen quadrant davits were installed and possibly some rafts were kept on this deck. Mm -hmm. That's so cool. This almost seems like a perfect place to just kind of have a cigarette. Let's go once you're done.
This structure was either a temporary addition to Britannic or it was to become one of the two motor houses for the gantry davits. So we are now on the docking bridge. But I guess you could say it's also part of the boat deck because we're level with it. Docking telegraph, maneuvering telegraph, rounds patent telemotor, Rosebank, Ironworks, Eidenberg. The docking bridge allowed for easier navigation while in port and docking at piers. The helm had a direct connection to the steering engine. Other instruments here included a compass, telegraphs, and telephone. That's probably right, right, right there. Absolutely beautiful. Just stunning. You know, I hope that in the future, you know, I don't know if they're going to ever make this open source, this uh, experience, but have it open source or something or have you know special people who want to work on this to expand it so this way you know we could see in all the interiors of the uh, hospital version and then all the interiors of the RMS version on top of the sinking now how cool would that be guys that would be really really cool so here we're going into third class this area would have served as the third class entrance in passenger service. These stairs down lead to what would have been Britannic's third class cabins when serving as a liner, but instead serves as wards. This doorway leads to what would have been the the third class general room when Britannic served as an ocean liner, but instead serves as Britannic's isolation ward. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Drinking fountain. That was really, really cool, man. This doorway leads to what would have been the hospital when Britannic served as an ocean liner, but instead serves as Britannic's isolation ward. Interesting. So through here, we're on the uh, lower part of the uh, aft well deck. This on Titanic and Olympic would have been open space. There would have been no roof. This particular thermo tank delivered hot air to second and third class accommodations. Oh my god, look at the size of that tool. We want to get hit in the head with it, we might die. This doorway leads to what would have been the second class promenade, but instead serves as the RAMC parade ground. It is from that promenade that Britannic's engineers jumped from the sinking ship, being the last known people to abandon her. Yeah, that's true. So yeah, as the ship was going down, Captain Bartlett uh, signaled the uh, the forward uh, uh, funnel whistle and uh, 
he, it was two long blasts, and the people down in the engine room heard it, and they knew it was time to abandon ship. So, yeah. Electric winch likely used for warping operations along with the two low rollers on the deck. The aft well deck. On the Olympic and Titanic, this deck was open with low hatches and a different layout. On Britannic, it was enclosed to give third class a promenade that was protected from the elements. Sorry, I had another yawn there. Okay, so that was for lavatories and baths. This room was intended to be the second class gymnasium. Nice. Kind of a small room, though. That's crazy. Alright. I'm going to go back up. Bing bada boom. Oh, this stairwell. Yeah. These doors were the only access point for what would have been the ship's infectious hospital in passenger service. So now we're going to head forward and check out the forward areas. Okay, so finally I'm I'm forward and I'm at the front of the ship. So we're going to go down to A deck and take a look at the front half of the A deck promenade. For hospital service, this promenade was in, was closed off at one end and made into a ward for officers, complete with beds and privacy curtains. See, I think this is pretty cool that they turned a promenade deck into uh, into just like bedding, and it must have felt so good though to be in here. I mean, can you imagine? I mean, it's like, just imagine just being so comfy in here in the nice, nice breeze, the little nice warm breezy air of the night in the Mediterranean. And then it's like, you could just kind of, if, you, if you're a smoker, all you had to do was just, you know, smoke your cigarette, you know, throw it out. There you go. Got some bookshelves here. You can see into the forward first class lounge there, or staircase. I don't know why I said lounge. side you even got like little little vents there to keep you if it's kind of cold out you got these vents here to keep you nice and warm nice it I don't know it just it just feels cozy in here for some reason like, I feel like I'd just be cozy in here.
Alright. Now we are on C deck. No, B deck. We're on B deck. I don't know why I said C deck. While this B deck promenade was eliminated on Titanic and later Olympic, it was partially brought back in Britannic's design for its hospital conversion. The promenade was turned into an officer's ward with beds and privacy curtains. Yep. So this is just another another thing. Uh, still, you still feel pretty pretty nice and cozy, you know, back in here. Still feels pretty warm and cozy. And... Yeah. These doors would lead to the forward grand staircase. You can explore that space as both a hospital ship and an ocean liner by navigating it to your main menu. Thank you very much. Yeah, we got some issues here with the uh, with the game, just some shakiness or tearing in the graphics. I pretty much have everything set on extreme, so. So these plates here, they could be put on these windows with, where, if you could see, like these little notches. They would go in there, they'd slide on, and what it would do is you put these on the windows, and they would, the windows would be protected from when you have like major you know storms especially from like walls of water especially if like a tidal wave were to hit the uh, the ship or a rogue wave yeah cargo winches used to lower and raise cargo through the hatches oh the number on the red sign under the bridge is the ship's transport identification number. Britannic served two tours with the British Navy as a hospital ship. For the first tour, she was number G608. For her second and final tour, she was number G618. So that's those, uh, those numbers right there, right underneath the bridge windows. And... Oh, the ship's uh, builder's plaque is in here. Huh. Interesting. Alright, so we're going to go over to the port side. You can see the green lights again. Just kind of check this side out real quick. And then we'll head even more forward. We'll head down to sea deck. Same thing. The lights went out! Ah! No, I'm just kidding. Daylight is approached. So now here we are on the forward well deck. In a departure from the design of the Olympic and Titanic, hatches two and three were extended high above the forward well deck and stairs were added between them to grant direct access to the third class spaces below. Man, look at that. Look at these cranes. Oh, okay. You know, I wonder if can I hop on there? I don't think I can, but come on. Nah, it's not gonna let me. Darn it. That would have been great though. That, 
that looks incredible. Just looks absolutely incredible. So, over here. Okay. Got that. Comments. Yep. We'll head to the starboard side. And then we'll go up on the forecastle deck. Um, I know at the beginning of the video I said that I was going to do the RMS version next. Well, I definitely will, but in another episode. Uh, this one's going pretty long so already, so... So I'll just do that in the next episode. And then the final episode will be... I'll do the sinking. <laughs> that is so cool. I just want to climb those ladders all the way up. Like, it, I don't think in real life I'd be able to do it, but... In a game, yeah. <laughs> Pretty cool. Alright, so we're getting down towards the end here. I'm going to just tour this real quick and then I'm going to jump overboard and just kind of show you the exterior of the ship. Got a nice bell right there. Got the crow's nest up there. Foremast. The ship's crow's nest was located high above this, the deck on this mast. And the nest was accessed via a door on sea deck and climbing up a ladder up the inside of the mast. A derrick was attached to the aft side of the mast for lifting cargo. So that would be this right here. This is the derrick right here. Wire reel, a spool of wire for use in warping the ship during docking. Crew galley skylight. Nice. Uh, this and the other two steam winches were used for the lifting of heavy cargo. So in the Alpha, I guess we're going to be able to uh, just kind of use these machines, which is going to be awesome. Breakwater. Redirects water from washing further aft in rough seas. Kedge anchor. Used to warp the ship when movement is needed in tight spots. It was deployed by lowering it to a lifeboat and dropping it overboard in the needed location. Cargo hatch number one. Capstan control valves used to operate the four capstans on this deck. Man, I love how those look. Brass and yeah, metal and brass. Portable telephone box. This box and pedestal, which contained a phone, could be moved to other sockets on the deck when needed. Okay. It's pretty cool. Capstan. A rotating drum powered by steam engines below deck used to handle ropes and cables during warping operations. Ah, the windlasses and the anchor chains. So these windlasses, driven by steam engines below the forecastle deck, were used to lower and raise the two main anchors. So I guess right here you have like a little access hatch, maybe a couple, just to kind of get down below. Yep. Oh man. You got the anchor crane right there oh man that's 
so beautiful. I love the detail of all this. It's just incredible. over here this was one of three main anchors on the Olympic class ships the center anchor was kept in this well and deployed using the anchor crane directly aft this was difficult process it was rarely done I can imagine so Ooh. wow we Am I going to do it? Am I going to do it? Nah, I'm not going to do it. Nope. <laughs> Hall's latest patent. Nice. So let's get a... Uh, last good look for our jump overboard. In real life, I would not do this, but in a video game, I can. I like the detailing of these ropes that connect to the anchor cranes. All right. Let's jump overboard, shall we? If it allows me to. Oh, yeah. Goodbye, cruel world. Wee! Oh, man. Oh, my God. Wow. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna do one better. I'm gonna sit on the floor here. This way I can get more of a lifelike experience like I'm just in the water. Oh my god. That is incredible. Oh my god. Britannic. Absolutely beautiful. This is just incredible. These really were big ships. Now obviously in today they're like toys in comparison. But still, they're massive. Oh, oh yeah, the sun's going down. That means we'll be able to see all the lights come on and see what the ship looks like. Oh, those came on. As to how large these ships really were. I'm still not at the back. Well, okay, everybody. This is where I'm going to call it an episode. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys had fun watching this. I know I had a lot of fun doing it. Uh, please stay tuned for the uh, next episode where I do the RMS version 
Uh, pretty much the same thing, but we'll see some different... It's going to be different. It's going to look different, for sure. But if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, please do hit that thumbs up. And make sure you guys hit that bell notification so you guys stay up to date with all my latest videos. So until next time, guys, I will see you in the next one. Bye, everybody.